y'all, it's Kay with Crafting Cousins. Trish and I are so excited that you decided to stop by our channel today. If you're new here, welcome. We hope you visit often. And if you're returning, Trish and I thank you so much. Today is a special video because we're debuting three special home decor pieces for your front door that cost so little and add so much. We just know you're going to be the envy of all your neighbors as you change these out from month to month and season to season. And guess what? We have all these patterns ready to download for you in the description box below. Now, let's get to crafting, y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this pattern that I sketched out of a firecracker. I have already blown it up and made PDF pieces of it so that I can cut it out and tape it together. I will put a link to that PDF as well as to just the JPEG down in the description box below if you would like to have a copy for your project a piece of duck cloth. You could also use drop cloth or burlap, some acrylic paint in red, white, blue, orange, yellow, and black. You can use any colors that you would like for yours. Some leftover grocery bags for stuffing, some twine, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I love making these stuffed door hangers. They're one of my favorite things to make for the different seasons. They're so easy to make and they're very economical. I can make one of these for about $2. They also sell well at craft shows. Now, when you're deciding what you want to make, you want to kind of keep it simple because if you get too intricate, you're not going to have enough space to stuff it and then it's just going to kind of get floppy and hang there. So simple shapes are better. Once I decide what I want to make for the season, I will either sketch out a simple shape or I will go and search for an SVG that fits that design. Then I pull it into a Word document. I blow it up, normally either 20 inches or 24 inches at its widest point. That's up to you how big you want it. Then I will save the different pieces as a PDF and I print out all those pieces, cut them out, and then we're gonna tape them together. Now, I have already done all of this for you for the projects you're gonna see in this video, so you don't have to do that. All you have to do is print the PDF that's in the links below, cut it out, and tape it together, and you're gonna be ready to go. Now we are going to cut it out. I double my fabric up and I lay my pattern out the way I want it. Then I take a pen or a pencil and I trace around it. Now Kay likes to pin hers down and cut it out and there's no right or wrong way for this. It's just whatever you feel most comfortable with. If you pin it, it doesn't shift around as much, but I'm not patient enough for that. So I just trace around it, then I hold my hand on top of it and cut around the piece. Now, before I start painting, I'm going to take a pencil and just kind of sketch out the top part of my firecracker. I remove the back section because I'm not going to be painting that. You can paint yours if you want to, but on most of my projects, I don't. When you're using this kind of duck cloth or even drop cloth, it doesn't ravel as bad as burlap does. So I normally do not paint it unless I need it to go with the front of it. For this one, I didn't think I did. Now for the top part of my firecracker, I'm using a Admiral Blue paint and I'm painting the top. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to paint the bottom of this with some white acrylic paint. Now you don't want to use chalk paint for these because chalk paint has a tendency to run if it gets wet and acrylic paint does not do that once it's dry. You don't have to paint the bottom of this, your fabric is white, but it does seal those edges to keep them from unraveling and it gives it a brighter white look. Once that paint has completely dried, I'm going to come back in with a small round brush and some flag red acrylic paint, and I'm just going to make some wavy lines across this. Now, I did not worry about if these were perfect, if they were spaced the same. I wanted it to have that whimsical look, so I just painted them on there. I want to give the impression of a flag. I'm not necessarily painting a flag, but you do yours however you like. 
Now for the bottom part of this where my sparkle is coming out, I wasn't real sure how to paint this. I started off painting it with some yellow acrylic paint. Then I added in some of my red, which of course makes it more of an orange color. And I just kind of moved it around. Then I come in with some white and just kind of highlight those edges. And I was pretty happy with how it came out. It is supposed to be whimsical. For the top part of my firecracker, I decided I wanted to do polka dots instead of stars. Again, this is supposed to just kind of give you the impression of the flag. It's not supposed to be an actual flag, and I like the polka dots better. To do this, I took one of those round sponge brushes that you get in a pack from the Dollar Tree, and I just dip it into my white acrylic paint and make my dots. Now, you want to let that paint completely dry, and once it does, I came back in with one of these brush um, markers that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I am really loving these, and I did a little bit of highlighting on this. We'll do some more in a bit, and then I'm going to add my wording. Now, I'm using a piece of carbon paper, and I put my pattern on top of it, trace over it, and it transferred my lines. You don't have to do that. You could totally just freehand this. So many people ask me, though, where I get my carbon paper, and I got mine a long time ago at Office Depot, but you can also get it on Amazon. It lasts forever. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to paint my USA with that same Admiral Blue that I used on the top of this. We're just going to paint it in and then we're going to let that completely dry. Then I'm going to come back in with some of my white acrylic paint and a small brush and just kind of do a slash inside of it. Again, it's not perfect. I wanted it to be whimsical. Now this part, <laughs> I have mixed feelings about. I took that same brush marker that I used before and I did some little doodle marks on this. I doodled inside of my circles. Um, I kind of like them, I'm not sure, but I really like the doodling on the outside of this and the highlights on the lines. I think it just made everything pop. I love to do doodling. I think it gives your projects personality. Now we can put this together. I'm going to take my bottom piece and line it up. Then I put some hot glue on the edges as close as you can get and I press it down and this is going to seal it together. Now the top of this did shrink up some because of your paint. So I did the very top, then I came down and I glued the bottom. Then I'm going to do those sides. Now make sure you leave an area to be able to stuff this with. I did that at the bottom of mine. Then you're going to take some of your leftover grocery bags. This is a great way to recycle those. And we're just going to stuff them up in there. Now I don't like mine really thick. I like it to just kind of pop up. But it's up to you how thick you want it. Once you get those in, we're going to seal that up with some more hot glue. The last thing we need to do is add a hanger. I take some twine, I thread it into a darning needle, then I pull it through the back where I want it to hang. We're going to tie a knot, trim it off, and with that, this project is complete. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using a picture that Trish drew off for me. And then of course, we'll blow it up to make our project. We're going to be using lots of cheap acrylic paint. I'm going to use this really hot pink, this medium pink, and later I even added in a very light pink. We will need small amounts of other colors. I picked citrus green, king's gold, and white, and also a black and an orange. I'm going to be using wired ribbon. I have this cute two and a half inch flamingo ribbon that I've sort of hoarded, but I have used in a few projects over the last two years. A black and white stripe that came from Hobby Lobby. And then that pink with white polka dots came from Michaels. 
And I'm also going to be using my drop cloth again. I'm going to be taking off a few pieces once again. This is a great investment, y'all, because you can use it for so many projects and it's very cheap to use. I'm also going to be using my precision tip hot glue gun, some floral wire, and even a zip tie. So the first thing I did was enlarge the picture on my computer and it leaves a little margin on the side. So what I'm going to do is trim those pieces up as I go and then I take my clear tape and I'm just going to connect all the pieces to make the pattern for my project. This isn't difficult at all, but it does take a little time. And I found out what that flat piece was on the bottom of the tape, right? You can hold your hand on the top and press down and it will hold your pieces in place while you make all the connections. And if you would like to make your very own flamingo, what you need to do is look in the description box below and, and there you can download a link and make your very own pattern. So the first thing I like to do is take my fabric and stack one on top of the other so I can cut two pieces at the same time. And then I'm going to use straight pins and I'm going to pin it down to the fabric. The reason I do this is because this fabric moves around too much for my taste. And then I'm going to take my fabric scissors and cut everything else. You know, those scissors you don't let anybody touch. Once everything is cut out, I'm going to remove the pins, but some of them I'm going to place down onto the fabric and hold the two pieces together just a little bit longer. And this next step, you can skip if you don't want to do it, but I'm going to go in with my black acrylic paint and I'm going to paint just a small margin all the way around the front and the back piece as well. Why do I do this? Because this fabric tends to fray quite a bit and I want to stop that fraying. So I take the extra step because I know I'm going to use a margin of black around this pattern anyway. If you don't want to use the black paint, you could also use school glue but this will stop the fraying and help everything to kind of stay the same size. At this point, I'm going to go back to my pattern and I'm going to cut off all that negative piece that will be the black margin all the way around so that I can use it to trace it down onto the fabric. I'm also going to cut out that space between his legs and then from the glasses and the wing also. And if you trust yourself to freehand it, you don't even have to go to the trouble to cut out all of these pieces. But I don't really trust myself, so I cut mine out. And then I am going to center it onto my piece once again. But yes, I am going to use pins and I'm going to pin it down. It just slid too much when I tried to draw on all the little pieces. And I used just a black Sharpie marker, the fine point, and that's how I traced all of my pieces out. I even went back later and I drew those lines down between the sides of his legs because it looks better to have the lines in the drawing. And when I painted, I just painted up next to that. You'll see that later. And here I'm going in and I'm going to cut off that part around his glasses and his bill. And I just kind of trace in those pieces also. So everything will be traced in at this point. And now I separate the front from the back and I'm just working on the front and I'm going to paint in all of the items that I want black. Guys, keep in mind that when you paint, as you paint, this kind of cloth does shrink quite a bit. So when we come back to line it up, it will be a little bit off, but that's okay. We're going to make it work. Now I'm coming in with the pink. This is the lighter of the pinks and I'm going to paint in his wing. We'll come back later after that dries and do some shading on it. I painted his bill in the orange. It is a little bright, but that's okay. We're going to tone it down later with some yellow. For his legs, I'm going to paint those in that yellow, the king's gold. My hint for painting is that it works best to kind of push it towards you. Use a small brush if you're anxious about getting on any surfaces that you don't want. Keep your paint close to what you're painting and then you won't have any drops. For his glasses, I'm going to use this lime green color and paint them because I think green and pink just look so well together. And the drop cloth really won't bleed through because that's the whole purpose of a drop cloth in the first place. And keep in mind that I did stop periodically and let parts of my piece dry so that I wouldn't put my hand into it when I started the next color. As a matter of fact, everything was completely dry when I started this darker pink because it was the most that I had to place on the piece and I saved it for last. 
and you could leave it at this point just like it is but I did go in and do a little shading down his legs I put some orange and it gave it a lot more depth really hard to tell that on camera but it looks really good in person and for the orange on his bill I'm going to soften that with the yellow the king's gold and I did apply it a little heavier towards the outside edges for his wing, I'm going to go in with a lighter pink that I pulled from my stash. And I'm just going to do some highlights here and there and just follow the shape of the wing at the bottom. And finally, up here on his glasses, I'm just going to add a little of the white paint we used earlier. Sort of like a reflection of light coming up on the glasses. So I love these little clips that I had when I used to sew. I think they're actually made for quilters, but they work great for holding a piece in place so that you can glue it down. Notice that this piece has shrunk quite a bit from the one below it, plus I did trim it off at some point. I find it so much easier to turn it over towards the front, and then I start slowly removing my clips, and I decide where I'm going to glue it down. But it's easier to place that glue on the back of the front side, and then place the back side down onto it. I just sort of press it down. I didn't even really need to wear any finger protection because the fabric's pretty thick and I did not have any seepage back through. And you can see here the pocket that I left open at the top. Honestly, you could have left it a little bit larger, but I still had plenty of room to stuff in all of my grocery bags. First, let me show you how I do it. I turn mine inside out and then I roll them towards the middle, hiding all of that writing that comes on the bags so it will not show through on my piece. And I just use a wooden dowel so that I can poke it down in all those tight places. But honestly, for this first one, it was a little much, so I took it out and I cut it into smaller pieces and then I poked them down in there with my wooden dowel one at the time until I got the feet looking pretty much like I wanted them to. And then you just start stuffing him with as many of those grocery bags as you want. It's a good way to recycle them, but I keep continuously turning it over to the front because I don't want mine to be too stuffed but I do want to make sure that there's enough in all the narrow pieces though that his head doesn't flop over or his feet either. But once you get him stuffed as much as you want you're going to come in with hot glue and then seal up that top piece so that everything is one big pillow if you will. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut off all that excess from the bottom where everything didn't line up completely. Because as I told you before, it will shrink, the fabric that is, once you put on the paint and it dries. At this point, we need to put on a hanger. I'm going to use some covered floral wire and I'm just going to remove a couple of inches from both ends of it so that I can use that to attach it to the back of the flamingo. I'm going to start out by twisting it in towards his tail part here and I'll just twist it upon itself, secure it with hot glue and then I'll come over to his head in the side there and do the same thing, just place it through some of the fabric, twist it around and secure it with hot glue. And that's kind of what our hanger is going to look like. You can adjust it when you get it on your door. Now, I wanted to make a bow for my piece. If you don't want a bow, you can leave that off and have it complete just the way it is. But I'm doing two four inch loops on each side and about seven inch tails with this first pink ribbon. For the second ribbon, I'm doing it just a tiny bit smaller and I'm only doing one loop on each side. For the flamingo ribbon, well, I don't want my flamingos to be upside down. At first, I just cut one piece and I was going to make the tails. And then I thought, duh, the left side is upside down. So what I end up doing is just cutting two pieces where I have the ribbon a little bit smaller than the ones underneath it. And I'm going to wire them in before I totally trim them off. But I'm going to place them one on each side with overlap so that I can have my flamingos always right side up. And then I just made two simple loops, kind of pinched it in the middle and put it down onto my pegs because I'm using my easy bow maker to hold everything. And once we do that, our bow will be complete. We're just going to take a zip tie, slide it underneath, start tightening while it's still on the easy bow. I'm going to cut off a piece of floral wire that I can use in the back and attach it to our flamingo. 
Once we tighten that down, we'll cut off the excess. And of course, we're going to come back and fluff that bow. I'm going to dovetail those ends, cut some shorter, just make the adjustments till we get the bow perfect. And then to attach it to the piece, I'm going to attach it with that floral wire, the thinner floral wire that I attached to the back of the bow. And I'm going to wire it in, but I'm going to leave it where I can slide it to the right or the left, depending on my mood. Here I have it in the center, but in my pictures, I'll show you two different options for the bow. My friends, I want to invite you to come with me to a crafty cruise getaway with four other channels here from YouTube where you can enjoy beaches and sand and tons and tubs of crafting inspiration. This ship has so many amenities that you are going to just have a blast. Plus, you get to connect with other crafters. But here's the thing, space is very limited. So make sure you go to craftycruisegetaway.com to get all the information that you need. Everything is linked down below in the description box. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this door hanger, we are going to use this ladybug pattern. I blew it up, made PDFs of it, and printed it out. I did put a link to the PDF down below if you would like to have a copy. Some duck cloth, or you could use drop cloth or burlap for this. Some ribbon of choice. I'm using this that I got from Hobby Lobby. Some red and black acrylic paint. Some chenille stems or pipe cleaners, however you call them, and some foam balls from the Dollar Tree. I wanted black, but I didn't have any, so we'll just paint these. Some twine, some grocery bags for stuffing, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I knew I wanted to make a ladybug door hanger, so I looked for an SVG, and I thought this one was perfect. I blew it up and printed it out, and now we're just going to cut it out, and we're going to piece it together. Now, you're going to have a lot of overlap for these, but you want to have that overlap so that you can line them up properly and be able to have something to tape them down to. Our ladybug is kind of wide so we do end up with more pieces for her than we do for some of our patterns. Now once we get it cut out we're just going to line it up overlapping it until it fits and then you're just going to use clear tape to tape it down. I like to put quite a bit of tape on mine because I want it to be really sturdy. I sell these at craft shows. They sell very well so I like to be able to use my patterns over and over. Now I'm going to take my fabric, I double it over, and then I just hold it in place and trace around it with a pen or a pencil. You can also pin it down if you're more comfortable with that. Then I just take my scissors and cut out both pieces. Before I start painting, I'm going to use a pencil and go in and trace out the head, and then I'm also going to trace out those wings. This is going to help with painting it when we get to that part. Before I paint my ladybug, I want to work on these little balls for the antennas. I stick them onto a toothpick and then I just paint them with my black acrylic paint. And once I get them painted, I stick them down in some foam and leave them to completely dry. Now we can paint our ladybug. I'm using flag red acrylic paint by Apple Barrel. You can use any red acrylic paint that you want to use. We're going to give this a really good coat, trying to get on those edges as well, and then we'll set it aside and let it completely dry. Once the red paint is dry, I'm going to come back in, and for the body, I'm using a small paintbrush and some black acrylic paint. And then once we get that part painted, we're just going to flip it around, and I'm going to paint the head of my ladybug. Again, trying to make sure I get those edges, and then we'll set this aside to dry. Now I'm going to come back in and do my dots for my ladybug. I'm using one of those round sponge brushes like you get from the Dollar Tree. And I am not doing any sort of pattern. I'm just kind of plopping them on. I want it to be whimsical and I really like how this looks. 
Now for this one, I did decide to paint the back of it. I thought that it would make it look like the underside of the ladybug. So I'm going to use my black acrylic paint and completely paint the back and set it aside to dry. You don't have to do this if you don't want to because you're not going to see the back and as long as you don't get paint on it, it's still going to look pristine. Now that our paint is dry, I want to make a bow. I'm just gonna take my ribbon and I pull off some and I start making loops. I try to make sure that I keep my loops as even as possible and I do three on each side and leave some for the tails. Now we're just going to trim it off where we want it. Then I take my bow and I scrunch up that center piece, just bringing them together. Then we're gonna take a piece of twine and I wrap it around the center of this about six times and then tie it into a double knot at the back, trim it off, and we have a cute little bow. I'm gonna trim up those tails and then I fold them in half and cut them at an angle and we'll fluff it out. For the antenna, instead of cutting them out of my fabric, I decided I wanted to make some. So I took two chenille stems, I twisted one around, and then I thought I was gonna use it for a pattern for the other one, but yeah, that didn't work out so well. So I just laid it down and twisted it up as well. Fortunately, these are very forgiving. Now I'm gonna take my little foam balls, I opened up my hole a little bit, and I'm gonna fill it with hot glue and stick it on the end of my chenille stem, and we have cute little antenna. I'll put some hot glue on the other end of the chenille stem and then glue it onto the back of the top of our door hanger. Make sure you press it down really well. Now we can join the back to the front. I'm gonna put down some hot glue, then I line up the back and we're gonna press it down. You're gonna go all the way around. I normally do this in small sections so my glue doesn't dry. And you want to make sure that you leave an opening so that you can stuff this. You see I did that on the bottom. Now we're gonna flip it over and I'm gonna stuff it with my grocery bags. I don't like mine too thick, so I just use a few, but you put as many as you want. And then we're going to close up that opening with a little more hot glue. Just make sure you line it up as best as you can. To make a hanger, we'll take some twine and thread it through a darning needle. Then I'm gonna pull it through the back of my ladybug. We'll tie a knot, leave in a loop, and trim it off. Now we're just gonna take our bow and use some hot glue to glue it down to the front. And with that, this project is complete. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.